Hello, 8-Bit Universe. So, uh, this past year being as as uh, crazy as it was and uh, everybody having lots of free time on their hands, I uh, started digging around in my basement clean up down here and uh, dug out all my old Commodore 64 stuff. I uh, had, uh, I don't know, four machines, disk drives. Uh, you know, the, my original machine when I was a kid I still have, uh, and, and it still works. I had a couple other ones that, that were broken, need a little bit of repair, and I uh, started uh, hunting around for help, and I, I ran across, uh, you know, three great YouTube channels, uh, Adrian's Digital Basement, uh, Dave the 8-Bit Guy, and uh, Retro Recipes, and uh, pretty much binge watched all their videos and and got the machines fixed up and and while I was cleaning up found uh, entire sets of Commodore 64 chips you know CPU ROMs VIX the whole nine so uh, that led me to find the uh, 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 what do they call that thing the the 60 clone project and uh, found I can get a brand new board and I was like wow I, I can build an entire new Commodore 64 out of out of uh, that board and everything I, I had in the basement so one thing led to another and all, all the awesome mod videos that that I saw from uh, all the channels I mentioned and uh, wound up building a, a pretty interesting little machine I figured I'd uh, make a quick little video show it off a little bit and uh, maybe inspire somebody to uh, to do the same so uh, without any further ado here's our happy little brand new Commodore 64. So uh, now I'll just kind of run through the board one side to the other, I guess. But the uh, the power section here is uh, is pretty much stock. You know, we d we didn't do anything too creative here. It's uh, the original linear regulators. I wanted to keep noise down as much as possible. I didn't want any you know any extra switch mode stuff going on in here that that was going to cause any additional interference. Uh, the whole goal was to make this as, as clean running machine as I could. So, um, so this is, you know, just your good old fashioned rectifier caps regulators. So the, uh, the modulator obviously didn't need RF out, uh, didn't want composite out. Uh, like I said, I wanted to keep this as clean as I could. So I found this, uh, this open source project, uh, somebody had put together this, uh, this modulator replacement or modulator bypass, if you want to call it that. And uh, it's github.com slash T-E-B-L. Uh, so wherever you are, thanks, man. This board's awesome. And uh, I was able to, to grab this board. Somebody had bought a few, I guess, and, and they were selling them super cheap on eBay. So uh, I was able to grab the board, build it up. I left out all the all the uh, uh, composite circuitry. So uh, there's... This inductor's outright missing. This one you just bypass and, and loop right through. And uh, basically you're just taking the chroma and luma and running it through a little circuit, uh, a couple of resistors to uh, normalize the levels, diode, keep it all flowing the right direction. And then uh, there's a 7805 regulator, a couple of caps to keep it smooth that powers these uh, BC549 transistors. That's you know, effectively amplifying the chroma and luma signals that come out of the VIC and into this board. Um, uh, also gives you, you know, an audio tap out so you can use a, you know, good old fashioned audio cable, hook it up to a pair of speakers. It's got uh, a couple of spots where you could tie in a second SID. I guess the, uh, uh, those other boards, the, uh, not the 60 clones, but the, uh, I forget what they're called. Uh, but they uh, they have the ability to run multiple SIDs. I guess you could whack another SID onto the motherboard if uh, if you're really creative, and uh, and get you know double the channel or uh, uh, double the voices and, and stereo channels. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, th this is a great little board. keeps keeps everything nice and clean from uh, uh, from an interference standpoint. And uh, now this board, this thing is super cool. So this was. Uh, uh, Perry Fractic and uh, there's somebody else that worked with them. I think it's written on the board somewhere. But uh, Retro Recipes is selling this Vic 2 squared, uh, which is a combination of the LumaFix project as well as a couple of relays, uh, four relays actually, so you can switch back and forth between NTSC and PAL. Or uh, I guess if you really wanted to rig up just two different uh, generations of Vic, you could do it that way too. But the the real purpose is is really to uh, have uh, NTSC and PAL in one machine. Um, 
I'll slide this in a little bit. So, uh, uh, yeah, this is a, this is a great board and easy build. Um, it's really just, a, a one, uh, one logic. Uh, it's, a, it's an LS14, I guess, right? Yeah, it's the, uh, the inverter logic, right? And the way the LumaFix works, I'm sure everybody knows, but basically you, you induce an opposing signal to cancel out any noise that you're experiencing on the, uh, on the, uh, analog video that's coming out. Um, the, uh, the hole in the back of the case from where the, uh, uh, RCA connector used to be. Uh, this this board has you know a, a spot for com, uh, composite. Like I said, didn't want that, so I just had a hole in the case. So this kit was perfect because with a, a couple of washers and and the included toggle switch, it it drops right into there and uh, covers a hole in the back of the case. And I didn't have to make an extra hole in the case or anything to uh, to add it in that way. Um, the one extra thing I did on this, um, we all know there's noise on the VIC itself. There's the, the system clock, uh, as well as, you know, a couple other address lines that are going into the RAM and everything else, you know, so it, it can share RAM with the CPU. Um, you know, the cycle sharing that does back and forth with the 6510, right? So there, there's there's a lot of signals happening in there, and that, that induces noise into the VIC. And there's not much you can do about that. That's where the, the LumaFix comes in, where it'll, uh, you know, help cancel that out. But there's a ton of noise on the board itself, though. The the traces that run from the VIC to the modulator that come up in these pins, right? They run right alongside, you know, other uh, uh, data bus lines and address lines, and that induces noise directly in into that circuit as well. So, uh, all that to say, I uh, I peeled out uh, the chroma and luma pins from the output of this board, and. Uh, you know, uh, effectively disconnected them from the traces, put these headers on it, and uh, I, uh, you know, just to test it out at first, I just had a, a DuPont jumpers running from the pins over to the uh, the input on uh, on the uh, uh, video amplifier board. It's not really a modulator anymore. It's really just a video amp. Anyway, um, and and that that helped, but the the DuPont connections, you know, they're they're not great for video. So. Uh, Took it one step further. I had uh, had some scrap coax laying around that came out of a, uh, a signal generator uh, that I had parted out a long time ago, and uh, the uh, you know it's, you know good high quality low loss coax, good shielding on on this uh, thin cable. You know a lot of times you know uh, you know thin cable isn't shielded very well. But being that this cable actually came out of a piece of of RF test gear, it's it's actually really high quality cable. So I'm like perfect. We, uh, I, I tacked it onto the DuPont headers, uh, you know, before I, you know, desoldered anything, and and I was really blown away at, at how much it cleaned up the signal, you know, just getting the wiring for that circuit out of the board and putting inside a piece of shielded wire. So, uh, going forward, I'll uh, I'll pull off these DuPont headers. I'll I'll tack these wires directly on to uh, make it as as clean as possible on the modulator side. Or the amplifier side, and uh, on the bottom side of this board, I'm just going to tack the wires directly onto the the relay output. So whatever selected VIC gets switched through the relay, the signal will come out directly into the coax. So I ought to be able to cut these coax runs roughly in about half, and bring them closer to the signal source. And uh, I'll probably just you know completely obliterate the traces. Uh, you know, to, to this header from the output of the relay just to make it as clean as possible. But I am pretty impressed with, with how much it cleaned up just doing it this way. But I'm, I'm sure we can we can get a little more signal to noise out of, out of this if uh, you know, with just a little bit more work. So at any rate, um, very, very cool uh, add-on from Retro Recipes and uh, highly recommend it. It was a great little kit, came with everything you needed to build it. His video is awesome for describing how to build the thing and get it into the machine and everything. Um, I, I won't go too much into uh, how it works or how to build it or anything. Go to go to uh, the Retro Recipes channel and check out his video. So if we, uh, if we kick over to this view, I ought to be able to do a uh, quick little demo. We'll uh, We'll fire up the machine, it's fed into my capture card, and uh, there you go, good old fashioned NTSC Commodore Basic. If you shut off the machine, throw the switch on the back, and turn it back on, 
now you got a PAL, uh, a PAL C64, and you can run all the uh, all the cool European demos and everything. And and uh, yeah, there's just a, a ton of PAL software for this thing. But I didn't want to lose the ability to use NTSC either, uh, being that you know I am here in the states. So at any rate, that's uh, that's the video piece of the board. Right, we'll shut it off. We'll kick it back over to NTSC. We'll slide over a little bit. And uh, we'll get that centered pretty good. Now here's the other half of the board. The uh, the 466 board uh, I liked because it had a uh, you know just much simpler logic. You know especially you know around the VIC, and uh, you know there's less glue logic around memory and and all that because you only need two memory chips on on this design of the board. So um, this is a uh, 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 new old stock uh, Signetics. Uh, was it the uh, S8100 or, or uh, whatever that uh, the Signetics uh, PLA was? Um, so uh, glad I had that laying around. Didn't want to use a, a Moss PLA. Everybody knows how uh, how much they can up and die on you. Um, this is the uh, AR4 SID, uh, the 65. Yeah, what was that? The uh, 6581 AR4. Uh, somebody said it might mean advanced resonance or something. I don't know. It's 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 a very late model chip. I think this one was dated '89. Uh, the CPU was an 88. Uh, the uh, the CIAs they were they were dated 91. Um, so the, these are all pretty late chips I had laying around. So uh, all, all the uh, all the logic I put on there were uh, authentic TI uh, logic chips and uh, Sanyo Color RAM. I, I got that. I forgot from where, but uh, that that was another one. I had to get shipped over from. Uh, I think it came from the UK. Um, but that that was new old stock as well. So pretty much all the chips in here are brand new. Uh, the Vic was seemingly a pull, and the 6510 was a pull. But all the other chips were seemingly new old stock with the pins splayed out. You know, they look like they'd never been used before, which is pretty slick. So uh, out of the really cool stuff, um, I was inspired by Adrian's digital basement. He did a video on kernel ROM switching without having to use a physical switch, and he used uh, an Arduino and he wrote some code for it. That guy is just a genius. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's my personal Commodore hero, man. He's awesome. But uh, at any rate, um, I thought, you know, how, how many different kernels were there? I, I just had Jiffy DOS in, in my machine when I was a kid, and you know, lo and behold, there's all, all these projects out there, open ROM project, everything else that's going on out there. So I thought, well, let's uh, let's build something pretty cool. So I was getting ready to build the sockets like Adrian did, you know, stacking two sockets and, and rewiring the pins to use the the uh, 28 pin, uh, like 27C style ROMs. And uh, I was digging around on uh, uh, PCB Way and found these little boards. Here's one that's not built yet. And uh, that, that's just a, a ROM adapter that uh, essentially does what, what Adrian did uh, by stacking two sockets and, and rewiring them a little bit. Um, but I found these cool boards that would save me from all that fiddly little solder work. So uh, I thought, yeah, we'll, we'll just go that route. They're, they're cheap enough to get boards out of those guys. So, so uh, I, I built up a, uh, a kernel ROM and a basic ROM. And I'm able to switch them with these jumpers here. These jumpers tie into uh, address lines 13, 14, and 15 on the ROM chip, so you can kick around to different segments of the chip. And uh, you know, you just glue your your 8K ROM files together, burn them to the EEPROM, and uh, now you have a, a, you know, a whole bunch of machines in one. So uh, we can do a little demo on that. So you you saw the uh, original Commodore Basic. That's with uh, a 14 shorted. If I pull that off, it'll go to the uh, the first ROM on the chip, and uh, that was a Speed DOS Plus. Never even heard of it. Didn't know what it was. I was just googling around for Commodore kernels and found this. So I thought, yeah, we'll we'll slap it on the chip. Thought that was pretty slick. So uh, if we go and short both of these. You get Jiffy DOS, and uh, this is the good old Jiffy DOS I had from way back when. I, I dumped the ROM and reburned it to this chip. So uh, 
Uh, I guess technically I pirated a copy, but I have owned Jiffy DOS for a long time anyway, so I don't I don't think they'll uh, they'll kill me for it. But uh, I you can buy a license for eight bucks, and uh, just to keep supporting those guys, I can't believe they're still in development. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go online a little later on tonight and and throw those guys a couple of bucks for keeping the love alive for uh, speeding up the IEC bus. And uh, lastly, see I did the same thing with the uh, the basic ROM here. Uh, I found out about that Open DOS project, uh, or Open ROM project, I guess, uh, where uh, they're basically, you know, white room uh, writing, uh, you know, new uh, new basic and new kernel for this machine. I, I after all these years, I can't believe how much development is still going on. So, anyway, if we if we short uh, both the chips on, uh, I think that's a fifteen. This is confusing. It's upside down. But uh, anyway. We kick them both over, then we can uh, go right over to the uh, you know open open ROMs build. They uh, I guess they have nightlies coming out every night for it and everything else. So I grabbed the latest ones of that and, and wrote them to these ROM chips today and uh, got this uh, got this little guy cranking along. So uh, you know next thing I got to do, uh, like I said, I mean you know uh, Adrian's digital basement takes all the credit for uh, for everything I, I'm doing here. Uh, there's the uh, Arduino that uh being that this is the 466 board I got this big open space um so uh I'll have to get one with uh without the headers on it already or something but uh I'll uh, I'll drop an Arduino in here tied into these uh, address bus lines and uh Adrian's code that he wrote uh to do the kernel switching I I, I can probably figure out how to how to whack in another couple of lines of code to uh to kick over the basic ROM when I kick over the kernel ROM to the open ROMs release because they have to go hand in hand if, uh, if you try to run one without the other you get all kinds of bizarre behavior and uh, yeah that tells you ROM mismatch but uh, you know running the uh, the kernel but if you try to run their basic only it does all kinds of terrible things and uh, that's because if I remember correctly the uh, uh, I forgot if it was basic or the kernel didn't fully fit in an 8K ROM, so a, a piece of basic was tagged on to the end of the kernel ROM or vice versa. I forget exactly how that works, but um, at any rate, the uh, the kernel and basic have to work and play with each other. So, uh, like I said, I, I think with uh, another couple of uh, 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 jumpers coming out of the Arduino, I'll uh, I'll plagiarize Adrian's code to. Uh, to whack in another another switch essentially to to switch the the basic ROM when I switch to the uh, the open ROMs kernel and I think we'll have a pretty neat little machine there so uh, yeah that's uh that's my 60 clone build along with the uh, Vic 2 square the ROM adapters the modulator all, all this new stuff that that everybody's putting into the community and a lot of guys are just doing it for free because they love it and uh i've i've loved the commodore for a long time it was my first computer and uh i'm, I'm glad to say my original one's still kicking and i got a new one that should hopefully work for another 30 40 years as well so uh thanks for watching and uh i hope uh hope this uh inspired somebody to uh take a soldering iron to their old machine or build a new one or something and uh uh, yeah, have fun out there. Keep the commie alive.